the Shiners, and I'm Sue, and here we are. We're interviewing Nina Angelo today, and there is so many things that I could say about her today. Um, the list, but we're going to talk to you about all your beautiful, wonderful things you've done here at the coast and around the world in Australia. And um, one question we can start with is I'd like to know about your childhood. Something, a memory of your childhood that you could share today about brought you into who you are today, that can actually mould you. Okay. I think the first real strong memory of my childhood has been that I wasn't from the surf, yeah, yeah. but I came to the surf, yeah. and I always believed I came from the stars. I always did. I used to wave to them. I used to know the group that I came from, and I used to go out as a little girl and wave to them, and even now I still do. So I felt that at a very deep level, and I knew that. And also, I think another memory, because my parents were Holocaust survivors and because I, I was born in Athens, came out here when I was, we, I was two years old um, to this country. Um, I think my, my parents made a point of not slotting us into any particular groups. So, you know, we might have been Jewish because they both met in Auschwitz, but they were from families that didn't, they weren't practicing Judaism, but they were Jewish. Um, they didn't, we didn't hang out with the Jewish people. My mum was Polish. We didn't hang out with the Polish people. My father, you know, were Greek. We spoke Greek at home. We didn't hang out, you know, with the Greek people. We had relatives everywhere. And my parents made a point of that. And even in the book you can see that. And my dad says, um, we had friends from all over the place, all different cultures, all different part life, life types. And so I guess a memory for me would be always having, my parents having spoken 13 languages between yeah. them, was always um, one of, of people around, different nationalities, yeah. with a great deal of love. And because it was straight after the war yeah. and all the losses that had happened, yeah. um, there was this incredible love and and this feeling of, of thank God, you know, we've got this amazing country that's taken us in mm. and given us this opportunity. Yeah, how old were you when you came? Two years old. Wow. But <clears throat> I was two, but I was pretty advanced too. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. to go sing all the songs on the Greek hit parade and all sorts of things. Wow. So, um, but because I came in, I came in like a peace person, you know, mm. after after the horrors mm. of yeah. what my my parents had experienced and all my, my grandmothers, my grandfathers, you know, all well, my cousins, aunties, uncles when you've got no stories left. Mm -hmm. um, so I was their mm. first new life when I came out into the world mm. and I was born in Athens and there was a civil war in Athens at the time mm. as well. That for me it's you know, they just bring peace yeah. into the world, yeah. and you know, you certainly got yeah. brought that to all the people around you, your yeah. friends, and the community here. Yeah, it's really important that to, that to be to be authentic yeah. and not. I've never tried to fit in with anybody else's ways or who they yeah. are. Yeah. Um, I've always just been my own person, yeah. Yeah. and it didn't matter if I didn't wear the clothes that were in fashion or whatever. Yeah. I made up my own clothes yeah, for yeah. design yeah. myself. <laughs> And I said to my granddaughter, now, you know, you're a leader or a follower, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I would never mm -hmm. follow the trends. I would just follow my own trends. Mm -hmm. And the same with the competition. I hated competition. I hated mm -hmm. that whole sense mm -hmm. when I was young that you're competing mm -hmm. and therefore if you're not a winner, you're a loser. That whole loser thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think my first thought, you know, was this resilience that I had. Mm -hmm. Um, and because there was so much love at home, mm -hmm. um, there was so much love for my parents yeah. and for us and for life mm -hmm. that no matter what happened at school, because I went to a private girl Anglican school yeah. in the eastern suburbs, which was all the, all the Rose Bay, Double Bay, Queen Piper, the, the wealthy yeah. people. Yeah. And I think I was the first little one girl to go there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was a, a very, very different, and, you know, I copped yeah, some yeah. discrimination. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I remember my, 
mamma <coughs> going home from school and saying, Mum, someone call me a wolf. And my mum said, well, if they call you that again, you tell them we came in like this and you came in like that. <laughs> I remember that so clearly. You know? <laughs> I don't remember it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that yeah. resilience. So no matter what happened at school, um, and it wasn't easy because it was totally culturally opposite. This is the oldest independent girls' school in Australia I went to. Wow. St. Catherine. So I was about eight or something when they had their centenary. We danced around the maypole. <laughs> That's how long ago it was. Oh, you wow. Know, I know, it's a really old school, but very Anglo and yeah, very yeah. much the way they they had these these schools in, in um, England. Yeah. And so um, it was testing for me, but it was also, it gave me resilience yeah. and because I had this joy mm -hmm. um, and we sang at home and there was always music mm -hmm. and so I could, it didn't bother me, mm -hmm. you know. You had that so safe home. nest at yes, home. Yes, that's what yeah. it was. Because I never wow. was invited to anyone's birthday parties mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. you know, out like anything like that. Nothing and now like you're such a beloved part of the whole community up here. See, Interesting how it all... I know, I feel really blessed. But you see, when you put out love and you do things with yeah. love and, and with authenticity, that you are who you are mm -hmm. and you're not pretending to be anybody yeah. else. Mm -hmm. Um, then, uh, you know, people feel maybe they can be mm -hmm. who Yourself, they are yeah, too. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think I wrote a, I wrote a post yesterday because, um, what's today? Tuesday. Yeah. On Sunday, I went down to Sydney um, to, the, to the Holocaust Museum, the Jewish Museum, mm -hmm. where an old friend of the family, Adi, and, you know, I've got photos. I put them up of me, three years old, sitting on his lap. When he and his wife, Flor, first came to Australia, mm. um, my father and mother were the first people that they met. Mm. They were actually standing, this is how my parents picked up people. They were standing at, uh, at the lights somewhere in Coogee, because we, we lived in Randwick. Yeah. And uh, my father had a little car, drove past, stopped at the lights and heard them talking in French and they didn't know where to go or anything. So yeah. he said, get the car in French and I'll take you. So they became really good friends. Of our family, he too was a, a Holocaust survivor. Yeah. Uh, Flora, his wife, um, she didn't have the numbers, but he did. Um, Adi, I didn't even know until a few years ago that he was still alive. I went down on Sunday because he gave a talk at the Jewish Museum. He called himself the happiest man alive. <laughs> he, wow. turned wow. 90, yep, he turned 99 on, the, on Sunday, wow. the day he gave his talk. This Dapper man, he's got his full license, he can drive anywhere. Wow. Wow. Dapper, and he said one thing, he, and he said a lot of things that yeah. told his story. He said, there's one word that I can't tolerate, and that's hate. Mm. You must mm. not hate mm. anyone. Mm. You cannot like people, but don't hate them. Mm. Because when you get that hate in you, mm. you cannot heal from the things that you've been through. Yeah. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and that's why I think with the forgiveness, which is a big part of my book, is forgiveness yeah. and no hate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you must remember, you can't forget yeah. these, these no. sort of things happen. But don't hate, mm -hmm. because you can't yeah. truly heal. No, that's you know? so powerful. Mm -hmm. yeah, can you? Yeah. So, yeah, he was so inspirational. Mm -hmm. oh, wow, 99. And <laughs> I knew him the longest of anybody there. <laughs> sitting behind him and he sees me and it's like for me, yeah. my mum and dad yeah. were there, you know, yeah. takes me right back. Mm -hmm. So I, I found the photo of me sitting with oh, him and, yeah, and his yeah, wife. Yeah, yeah, I found the photo and then had a photo taken with him. Um, and you think, wow, what an amazing man. Yeah. All the horrors that he went through and he talked about it. But he comes through and he said, I just want that we should all be friends, that there should not be any the yeah. barriers between yeah. us, yeah. that we're all one. And it's beautiful being yeah. to say oh, a message like that. Totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, at the Jewish Museum, mm -hmm. and he talks to a lot of children because yeah. they get about 70,000 yeah. high school kids wow. a year that goes through the Jewish Museum. Yeah. It's a quite an extraordinary yeah. place. They yeah. do have stories, too. Yes, and the story, and, and they've also got, like, a, a D's there on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. He's a volunteer.
around Tuesday, and he takes people around on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. He was one of the first ones when they first started it in 95 or something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Um, and he's still there every Wednesday, mm -hmm. drives there, does his, you know, takes people, <laughs> tells them stories, gets in the classroom <laughs> and talks about, yeah. talks to these children yeah. and says, don't hate. Yeah. This yeah. is what I went through. This is what happened to me. Yeah. And tells them some horror stories. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he said, but I don't hate. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we just have to love each other. Yeah, you know, that's, so that's, that's exactly how I feel. Yeah. So yeah. I think if anything, coming back to my childhood, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. was that sense of incredible love and, mm -hmm. um, and support in whatever we did. Mm -hmm. It was strict, my dad. My yeah. dad was strict, but just love. And that's the story. There's a saying by Kwan Yin that goes, Love is the answer. Mm -hmm. What is the question? Mm -hmm. That's all there is to it. <laughs> <laughs> and, isn't that good? Yeah. It's really profound. What's the question again? Yeah. Why do you want to hate someone? I you need more love. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So talk about your parents. How did they meet? So my mum and dad met in Auschwitz. My mother. She was only in there for about nine months mm -hmm. um, and she had a terrible role in the camp. She had to mm -hmm. take the bodies of people who had died and take mm -hmm. them to the gas, to the gas chambers. Mm -hmm. She was uh, very weak but she was stronger mm -hmm. than most and because some of them were diseased that they were left alone that what my mum was doing with the others, they were the German, the, the Nazis didn't go near them because mm. of diseases or anything. Mm. That's what she was doing. Oh. My dad, he was a very elite prisoner in Auschwitz. He'd been caught as a political prisoner. Mm. So he somehow got himself into this commando, which was called the Canada Commando. Now, I didn't know that it was actually named after Canada because they saw it as the Canada as the, the land of milk and honey. And the Canada Commando, there were only about 60, 50 or 60 men as part of it. And my father was the only Greek. Mm -hmm. And the only reason that he got in was because he was a socialist and he was caught as a socialist. Mm -hmm. And the, um, the Canada Commando was run by the com communist socialists. Mm -hmm. Their role, and they were the only ones in the, in the whole camp, their role was to be on the platforms. They were the only prisoners that could go onto the platforms, which they called the ramp, mm -hmm. um, when the transport was coming in with mm -hmm. all the people and unloading. And their job was to go and get all their, all their luggage, all their everything that they bought, mm -hmm. which was food and cigarettes and money and diamonds and gold. They bought the, the best of everything. They didn't mm -hmm. know all these people. They had no idea what they were going to do with the nations. Mm -hmm. And so they bought the best of everything. So their job was to take all that all the best of all of that would then go back to Germany. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing, so what they did, because they were very smart and savvy, was they would then, they had lots of suitcases because people came with their suitcases. Mm -hmm. They would then put some things in some of the suitcases and they would bribe the guards. It mm -hmm. was expected of them. So they'd bribe the SS, the guards, everyone along the way. Mm -hmm. They'd get their bribery, which allowed the prisoners to be freer because they wanted to get all these things with no other way. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they would also um, up, make other suitcases which they kept themselves. They'd get them into the camp, and it's in the book. My da dad tells the story how they managed to get them into their barrack, and they would use that to save people. So a packet of cigarettes, for instance, was worth a thousand dollars or thousand, you know, a lot of money in there. Mm. But he, he saved a few people because he had that. So because of the position they had, they had bits of food. Mm -hmm. They had food in there. They were also like the electricians. They could go into the kitchen. They could turn the lights off. They could pilfer bits and pieces from mm -hmm. there. And he tells a story how they set up a little area and then they would coax the girls, the women, over. Mm -hmm. Anything, a bit of loving, a bit of few hugs. You know, there was nothing mm -hmm. like that there. It was so with the, mon with the food that they would eat whole thing. So my dad saw my mum in there, passed each other. He said, you know, do, 
in full and he mm-hmm. offered us some food or something and she just loved him back. She was a Polish girl, 16 years younger than my dad. Wow. You know, she was traumatised like everyone. She wasn't, she was innocent when the war started when she was 16. So, um, you know, she just knocked him back on that. So that was, so their story goes in the liberation, which again is all in, in the book. Mm. And then after the liberation, separately, they went in different directions. Mm. Um, that was just a moment in time in there. Um, he, they both went to Paris. Uh, they asked to go to Paris. My mother, because her father, she was hoping her father was still alive, he went, mm. she was a doctor, and he went to fight with the, um, the Polish-English army. Mm. He was blinded in the war, but he, she didn't know if he was alive. She'd mm. lost her mother and grandmother and all the rest of them. So she was hoping that mm. maybe yeah. he was still alive. So she knew that he, he, with the English, that the closer she could get, and she spoke French, yeah. and that my dad spoke yeah. French, and that was their common language, that yeah. maybe the, the Allied headquarters in Paris would be able to be located if he was still alive. Yeah. So that's why she chose to go there. Yeah. And my dad, he didn't want to go to Greece because you know, there was a civil yeah. war. Yeah. So he also, he was French, and he went to and the Red Cross had set up a canteen um, in in Paris there, and uh, there's a whole beautiful story of Mum being given some money and buying buying a beautiful teal blue dress, which when you get the book you'll read it. It's a love story, and she walked into the canteen that night in this first time that she had this amazing little dress on, and he was there, wow. and he came oh. up to her and he said, "How nice." Haven't I seen you before? Yeah. Something like that. Wow. And my mother's reaction was, I know you men, you say that to all the women. <laughs> and, she, and she turned around and walked away. And he said to her, is this your name, Janine? He remembered her name. Yeah, and, okay. and she stopped and turned around. Yeah. And that's how they, they were. They fell in love in Paris. Um, they were engaged on Bastille Day. Mm-hmm. Um, why? To, he was asked by the interviewer, why did you pick that day? He said, because there were fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> For free. It was a festival. <laughs> <laughs> it was a joy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the right day. After all the war. Yeah. Yeah. And then they went to England and got, and got married in London. Yeah. My mum found her father. Oh, and so just, it wasn't easy to get over there, but... Okay. And my father went in fighting for her. Yeah. Um, and they wanted to send her back to Poland. And she just mm. freaked out. There was nobody mm. there, you know. So he, he went in to bat for her. People were scared mm. of my dad. My son's like that. Try and, <laughs> you should try and get it over him. He'll frighten you. And he's just like my dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just frightening just, enough to just, just like yeah, if you slip try it through. And, yeah, if you try and yeah. trick him or anything like yeah. that. You know, because they're a bit, you know, people who are in charge, people that have this little power play, mm-hmm. they play you. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's one, one little instance was, so she got permission to go to London yeah. to meet, to see her father. Yeah. She, she didn't have a suitcase or anything, just to put a few things in. Yeah. She asked at the Ashkenazi, because he was a Sephardi Jew. Yes. She's an Ashkenazi Jew, right? Mm-hmm. So very different, the mm-hmm. hot-blooded Mediterranean mm-hmm. You know the Spanish, Italian, the Greek, they're the, the Sephardic Jews. Okay. Then the Ashkenazi Jews are the ones from Northern Europe. Yeah, okay. The Russian, the German, the Hungarian, you know. The, yeah. But the Ashkenazis are a lot sort of colder and sort of more... Yeah. I think it's because of the sun. Yeah. I think... <laughs> I, 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 I totally agree. Do you? I, I 100% agree. Yeah. I think people yeah. that, that live in a country where there's a lot of sun... Yeah. And you're more outside, yeah. are much more warm and yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The sun. Yeah. People who live in cold countries mm. tend to spend more time yeah. inside. It's cold and it's dark. Yes, it's dark, it's cold, yeah. and they close themselves in. Yeah. So I think there's a yeah. difference. Mm. Yeah. So the Ashkenazi community wouldn't give him, um, wouldn't give her a suitcase, and mm. she said, "Look, I haven't got anything." Well, my father said. <laughs> come with me and he went there and he yeah. really gave it to them yeah. oh he did and and again he talks about it and he went up to the man and he said you know what sort of people are you 
Yeah. What if she just, what have we just been through? Mm. Yeah. And mm. her father, she's just found her father, the only relative that mm. she's got. Yeah, exactly. That she knows of. Wow. Mm. What are we talking and about? And you're not going to give her one suitcase to put a few mm. things in? Yeah. And he said, I was angry. He says in the book, mm. I was a bad man then. I was angry. <laughs> 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 he was and a I protector. could just imagine wow. him. Wow. You know, so because cool. anything that's not fair, not yeah. right. And he's in one of And I'm, I'm the same way. I think yeah. we were taught not to be afraid, to speak up. Mm. Yeah. This right. is not yeah. right. Yeah. So the guy was going, oh, and the next thing is who came to rights? Mm. You know, but <laughs> he was the one that would go fighting. So that's how they met. Yeah, so maybe for everybody who's listening and who does know you, um, who don't know you, the book that you're writing is really about you, the, the story of your parents in a way with your story as well. Yes. So it's the three st three um, stories really joining together and yeah. it's incredible just thinking back like where you came from, where your parents came from and where you're living now. It's a completely yeah. different, oh. different world. Um, and that we are sitting here next to each other right. um, as yeah. well. Um, it's, it's what just a blessing. Mm -hmm. It is, isn't mm -hmm. it? Truly, truly blessed. Yeah. And, and you're right. And my mum wrote her story for us. Yeah. And it was burnt. I thought it was burnt in my first house fire. She, which was in 88, she died in 85. And in the 70s, early 70s, she started writing it. Because she wanted to leave something, and she said in her in her writing, she said, "Look, my father had written something, and I was so grateful because when I was young, I really didn't care about his mm. journey or his trip. Because when you're young, all yes, you think yeah. about yourself. It's yeah, all yeah. about me, you know, yeah. my life, my <laughs> friends. You know, you don't think about <laughs> what your parents and your family have yeah. been through beforehand." Yeah. So she was grateful that he'd left something for mm -hmm. her. So she felt then that she had a responsibility to leave something and let us know a bit about mm -hmm. her as a child. Mm -hmm. And so she sat at an old typewriter and did it herself, mm -hmm. right up until the time the, the, the Nazis actually, the Gestapo got her. Yeah. And so her story, she's on the run from the 16-year-old girl on false papers and so. So we had her, her story. then. She must have given it to me, and I forgot, and I never even looked at it. Mm -hmm. And she died, and the time went fast, and then my heart burned down in Terrigal, mm -hmm. and I thought I'd lost that. Mm -hmm. um, Anyway, she, she was always happy to share her story. Mm. And so um, after the fire, um, I thought I had lost it. And then by sheer luck, there was some bag in the garage up the back that didn't burn down. And there was a box, somebody must have taken an old trunk in there. And in the trunk was a big um, a net bag. And in that bag was this journal with poetry that I'd written and story that I'd written and out of the back of it fell this wad of paper oh. and I opened it up and there was my mum's story. Wow. Oh, wow. Up until that time and I went, oh my God, mm -hmm. I was responsible for that mm -hmm. and I didn't do anything and look, it's been given back to me. So no I, way. Mom was so lucky. Wow. So I tried, yeah. I sat yeah. Your mum was the yeah. Yeah. Flames. Yeah. <laughs> Not you. Yeah. Anyway, I, I um, Real strange things happening with the fire at that time. Yeah. But anyway, I, I um, took that and I actually had it bound in copies for all the family. And that yeah. Christmas, I gave a copy to, to all our family. So that's when a friend of mine was doing her editing um, degree. She asked ah. me if I knew anyone who had a short story. <laughs> she visited. I happened to have my mum's story here. And yeah. I said, Well, look, here's my mum's story. So I gave it to her. And she got high di distinction for it. And then she came back and went, wow. wow. Yeah, she said, Nina, this story's amazing. Yeah. You've got to put your story with your mum's story. And mm -hmm. it would so, be so interesting. 
Well, I didn't know anything about my father then, mm. yeah. because he never talked a lot. Yeah. So I thought, all right, we'll start doing that. And then mm. some friends came and visited. One day, it's a Greek couple. They went back to their house. They checked online. Next thing, they sent me an email with a link to the Holocaust Museum in Washington in the United States. And there's my dad talking. Seven hours of recorded interviews oh. in French. I've been there all that time. Oh, my goodness. And I didn't know. So I took that, I got onto them, they sent me the download, and I went away and I thought, well, I've got all three now. Yeah. And so I thought, I'm not going to do mum's story, dad's story, Nina's story, yeah. because all of their books have been written about Holocaust survivors yeah. and the Holocaust. I don't think many, very, very few, would have been written by the actual people yeah. themselves. And the first generation of survivors, like myself, the yeah. kids that were born from this trauma and tragedy, yeah. Yeah. and what happened to those kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. And because my parents had such an amazing outlook on life, yeah. um, so I was the wee. Nice. Right. Yeah. I was the wee in between their stories, you know, coming in with a memory here and there, and then, yeah. you know, going back into it. And you see, it's, it's a was quite a challenge mm. to have three different stories yeah. Yeah. that work yeah. together yeah. that carried you into the next mm. chapter, you know, yeah. that you know, that you don't pick up the book and go, Well what's that got to do with what mm. we just you know yeah. 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 So yeah, that's how I've done what's the name of the book? It's called Don't Cry Dance. Mm. Don't tell me the why, just yeah. I call it that. Every single thing in this book has got a reason for it. Yeah. Even though the front cover, the colour of the cover, what's on the cover, it yeah. was all channeled through at, as it is. Mm -hmm. It was we were told. I was told this is what mm -hmm. it's going to be. Mm -hmm. um, so with Don't Cry Dance, three, four years ago, I went to Greece, to Athens. I was only going to be here a few days. I ended up powers that be upstairs decided I was going to stay there a lot longer mm. everything I was going to do fell through so I stayed in Athens and I decided I'd look and see if my name was written anywhere because I never had a birth certificate there was a civil oh, wow. war because there was a civil oh, war on in Greece I had no birth wow. certificate wow. and I thought gee it would be nice to see my name just written mm. somewhere so I started looking in Athens trying to find places and eventually on the last day that I was in Athens in the afternoon I went into the final office and the man there I told him in Greek um, mm -hmm. and he found this ledger and he ran his hands and saw my name and he said no. you're here you're here <laughs> oh, I know and, <laughs> and I went oh my god am I really that's amazing yeah, yeah. and um, I started tearing up yeah, yeah. and then he looked at me and he said congratulations you're an Athenian he put his hand up and shake my hand. And I just looked at him and I went, I'm going to cry now. And that's when he looked at me and said, Don't cry, dance. How cute is that? And that's how the, the book yeah. is called wow. Don't Cry, Dance. And that's exactly what my parents did, anyway. Yeah, my father brought music into this country and so we danced a lot. And it's so healing. For everything oh, we totally. go through, just mm. dance and dance sing and, and together. Music. Exactly. Right. Like when we had our yeah. first day, when you said, like, it's all about forgiving and love. That's what we need more of. Yes. Forgiveness, love, dance. Exactly. Dancing. And I could not agree more. Music. Yeah. We need to get into the joy. And really that community. And I mean, that's like um, just bringing it back to like the center coast. Like, what does the center coast mean to you? I guess I came up here in um, 1975. I bought a house in Terrigal. Um, oh, can you just mention for how much? 25. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's amazing. $25,000. That seems to have more of an effect how much it was. I know. On, on the year that I got exactly. it. You know? But my parents had built a place in Terrigal in the late 60s. Oh, really? Wow. Mm. 
So, so it was a road like coming up then. So it was along the scenic road. Oh no, yeah. we, we were coming along the old Pacific yeah, yeah. Highway. You know, like are we there yet? Are we there yet? Journey. Your car sick. She's got cars. That's true. Yeah. But there was no then no freeway or anything no, like no. that then. Yeah. Um, so I used to come up, and then my kids were born in '72, and I used to just come up every weekend to get away. Yeah. And um, that's when I figured. When they were about three, because I was a single mom of twins. Again, their father was, he was a Vietnam vet, so he was affected by war again, which then affected my family again. And he left when the kids were about 10 months old, so I raised them on my own. So, you know, this continuum is what war can do. Yeah. And so I have never been directly in a war, but yeah, I've been around the outskirts of a war. Yeah. That's why I work for peace so much. Yeah. And so that's such a healing <coughs> light spark. <laughs> if we can't use our experiences mm. for the good. Yeah. And look what's happening, you know, it's happening again. You know, people there's there, this hate speech, this mm. way of people talking mm. to each yeah. other and you know, you just write something up on, on social media and, and you get attacked. Yeah. You know, there's no respect. Yeah. No. We're all different. Yeah. So that's basically, um, I used to bring the kids up every weekend just so that I could have a rest, stay with my mum and dad. I could sleep in like one, two mornings, you know, just rest and know that my parents would take oh, the kids. Oh, how beautiful. Yeah. Twins, single the mom. Out and just give me, oh, give me just a bit of a break. Yeah, just, we sweet. had the fresh air, we yeah. had the beach. You know, I lived in an industrial part of Sydney in yeah. um, Place called Hillsdale in near Botany down that way, yeah. and um, and so to come here was, you know, for my kids. So when they were about three, I must say quite honestly, I didn't really know them that well mm -hmm. because all I did was work, change their nappies, feed them, mm -hmm. clothe them, mm -hmm. wash their clothes, take them to long day care, pick them up, come mm -hmm. home, feed them. I didn't know them. The only time mm -hmm. I really did was. On those weekends when we could go down the beach and yeah. go swimming and all the rest of it. Yeah. And when I was three, I really was concerned about the sort of life that yeah. that I could give them in Sydney. And mm. I thought that, what, what can I do for them? You know, and I don't even know them. And it's not fair. I may not be of a maternal sort of person, mm. but they are my kids. And, you know, they're here and I'm responsible for them. Mm. So um, that's when... Uh, again, upstairs decided that all the prices in Sydney were going to go up, <laughs> and the prices up here were really low. So I sold the place in Sydney, which was, I think, was about we got for about seventeen thousand dollars. Sold for about thirty-five thousand, and we well place done. here for twenty-five thousand. How's that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> in Terrigal, not even having any idea. So I've just wow. been very fortunate in that. Very supportive. And that way I spent yeah. the last year before they went to school, and it's a small school at Terrigal, so yeah. much smaller than it is now. Yeah. Um, and and we moved into our, our place away from all the memories, Sydney, the craziness. Yeah. I thought, well, at least I can give my kids fresh air, yeah. healthy bodies, healthy yeah. minds, all the rest yeah. of it. And, um, you know, I knew my parents were coming up, and then they moved up here more permanently. Yeah. So that's that's why. So that was 75. So it's really a place for you for nourishment, just yeah. easing out on them as well, just taking life a bit easier. Well, yeah. And, get, and getting to know your family. Oh, I had a back, <laughs> I had a backyard. I, yeah. I was home, got Nature. to know the kids. I was just around the corner from the school. Yeah. Um, I couldn't involve myself, but my art was what? Your my art. My art was what was killing me. I needed to, yeah. I needed to express myself. Yeah, well, I did because, yeah. you know, it was just, you know, I just always, I always just got ideas, like really <laughs> amazing ideas, you know, like, and that's when my father would go, big deal, she's cuckoo, you know, <laughs> oh, see, I used to draw, when I was little, I used to draw on my pillowcases and my sheets, and I never used to draw on walls like most kids do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard of pillows or sheets. 
Yeah. No, I really <laughs> wasn't. I was, I was fascinated with fabric and I was fascinated with it. Somebody made up that design and then that person was wearing it. I really liked that. And I, for some reason, I wanted to do my art so that people could wear it, eat on it, sleep under it. You know, that, mm. that to me, I want them to wrap themselves in and my art. I love that yeah, idea. Nice. So, and because I always wanted to do fabric, mm. you know, ever since I can remember, but it was something that was impossible to learn until my kids were, I think they were about a year old, and I was just stuck in there, and this friend of mine came and said, look, Mum, why don't you go back and do one night a week at, um, at the National Art School, which is where I had gone originally, and I'll come and sit with the kids. So one night a week, she did that. Even though I was exhausted from work and everything, it was, you know, it, it was driving me. And that's when I got into a screen printing course. Because before you couldn't, because it was attached to the fashion design school. Mm. And so that first I did a sculpture course because they couldn't get me in and then I did. And all I learned was the basics. So I had to buy the screen, the squeegee, cutting knife, uh, you know, red, yellow, black, uh, white and um, blue, my main colours and, and I just did everything, hand cut paper stencils and I just had a garage at the back, had a little studio after I learned just the bare basics because I had done my mm -hmm. art training before and that's how it sort of all started. Mm -hmm. And it was working in there one day, you know, I'm always playing around and did things for the school faith, got the kids in, my kids um, a class to do a design yeah. for the faith. So I thought, well, what can I do? I'm not going to bake cakes and I don't do stuff. <laughs> so I thought, well, what I could do is I'll take some of their designs and I'll cut them out and I'll print them on pillowcases with the name. I said to the wow. teachers, make sure that they, make sure the kids sign their names really big. And I sat there and I selected a whole lot and I sat and I cut these designs out, printed them on the pillowcases and they were, went up in a store and they just sold so quickly. I mean, I've still got my kids, you know, and they were just, you know, that's how fabric, yeah. that's why I call it the fabric of our lives, you know, it really yeah. lives with us oh, forever. Wow. That is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. and it's how we, you know, how we weave yeah. our stories together. So yeah. that's how it started, and I was in there, and I knew this woman who was on the board of the, what's called the CISA Community Youth Support Scheme, unemployed yeah. kids. Yeah. She, and uh, she said to me, look, we're always looking for new um, classes to do for the unemployed young people. Yeah. She said, what about, would you do a workshop in, because wow. I had this, I'd made it so simple and so inexpensive. Yeah, you know, so yeah. And she said, would you do that? And I thought, I'm going to pay me. You know, <laughs> like, so, for doing what you yeah, love doing. It. And wow. so I said, okay. And so I designed this whole course over six mm -hmm. weeks, as simple as I possibly could, because mm -hmm. I, and that I couldn't afford much anyway. Mm -hmm. And I designed this course and I found out that I was a really good teacher because they were doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. And they said, what if you do this? And I said, let's try it out. So we experimented all the time and ended up with so many techniques. Mm -hmm. And basically that was my first teaching and I loved sharing my skills. Mm -hmm. And I remember after, after learning to do a whole lot of amazing things that because I'll try anything um, when they asked me to do that workshop. Mm. And I said to a friend of mine who was a very well-known artist, how much do I give away? See, this guy, this is a good lesson for people. Yeah. You know how when you're, somebody's made a really good meal or a cake and you ask for the recipe, they go, oh no, it's a family mm. recipe, you know, it's a secret, you know, you can't yeah. have it. Right, same sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I des developed all these techniques and I said to this friend, how much do I give away? I've worked on this, these are my techniques. Mm -hmm. How much do I give away? And I got caught up in it and he said to me, Nina, you give away everything you know. Mm -hmm. You tell them everything because no one else is you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And 
no one else can mm. do what you do because they're not you. Yeah. Sh share everything. Absolutely. That wow. was a big lesson. Wow. Because through that sharing mm. of everything, they taught me yeah. because we were trying all these things. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's when I realised that yeah. we don't own anything. Yeah. That and we evolve oh. together. Absolutely. <laughs> And you, you play. play. See, exactly. when you play, yes. you don't have any standard of play. You don't say, no, oh, that's did true. you do a good play or did you play? <laughs> you know, you play. You so know, I'm not play. good at this play. <laughs> <laughs> we put a lot of pressure on ourselves, yes. don't you? Oh, I can't draw, I can't do this. And I just say to people in workshop, just play. Yeah. Just, just let your hand do it. It's not about mm. right or wrong or mm. good or bad or... Hers is yeah. better than yours. Yes. We go back Coming again. back to the competition. The competition. <laughs> Why do we have to be mm. in competition with anyone yeah. in creativity? Oh, yeah. How can mm. anyone oh. tell you that what you've just done mm. yeah. is not good? Yeah. Mm. You know? Yeah. Mm. yeah. What right has anyone got mm. to do that? Yeah. That's your reality. And I think that's the thing I'd like to teach people. Yeah. Because when we judge, we judge from the the left side of our brain, that's our analytical side. Yeah. And that's the same if we're, you know, we're dancing. I mean, we're having a good time dancing. Yeah. That's our right brain. And then yeah. all of a sudden we think, I must look really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then it's your left brain coming in and saying, you've just stuffed up that really good, yeah. fun dance because you think you look stupid and people are looking at you. Well, tough. And there is another beautiful teaching as well in there because what you said with your book is that it's like everything is a meaning. Like you thought about every single thing that you put in there. Who is anyone to judge anything that you wrote? Because you can't judge, you can just not understand it. Yeah. That's the main thing. Why did you do that? That's, that's a good question. Like why? Tell me. Give me the background. I don't understand it. It doesn't make yeah. sense to me. That's what we sometimes just judge and say, yeah, we do. that's yeah. ugly. I don't like that. It's just like, no, I don't understand it. Yes. It's really understanding. Well, if you see someone wearing two colours and you think, oh, I can't. <laughs> you can't wear pink and red. <laughs> you know, like, I can. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. but you see, you can see how the media pushes that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When they're looking into fashion, to look what this person's like wearing. Don't what? they look yeah, ugly? Yeah, and yeah. Isn't this awful? Mm. You know, I think when we stop allowing all that to affect us. Mm. Can I ask you? That, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Um, coming like from the Central Coast because you have done so much for the Central Coast and in the Central Coast and you're such a big part of the Central Coast but also where you came from and just like from all over the world mm -hmm. and from such a horror place to such a beautiful place mm -hmm. what's your vision like it can you dream even bigger um, wow. what's your vision for the Central Coast I think a lot of it's happening I mean mm -hmm. I having when I moved here there was no, the community, you know, there was no, the only arts here at that time was the Arts Council, Gosford City mm. Arts Council. There was the Musical Society, Gosford Musical mm. Society, yeah. the uh, Gosford Art Society. Mm -hmm. So you had the Potters, mm. but it was all very conservative, mm -hmm. very Anglo, mm. very yeah. conservative, mm. quite closed. Mm. Um, I didn't even know that there were Aboriginal people that had lived around here. Mm let alone that this was wow. such yeah. wow. an important place for for our first people. Yes. And the stories here are immense. Mm. Um, I could carry on all through here. Incredible stories. So we're very whitewashed, if you'd like mm. to call it that. Um, I wondered what's happening here with the arts and I really wanted to find out more. So the only place I would, could go to I ran and found out was the, the Gosford City Arts Council. Mm. And I turned up at a meeting one night and it was in somebody's lounge room. And I'll never forget this. Is that there were two older ladies there. One of them was knitting, the other one was nodding off like this. <laughs> they turned out to be great grand doyans of the art around here. They have, and you know, there's a park named after them. And, you know, I really went and meet them. And then there was a man who was the accountant. There was a guy called Jim Tarbox and he was a counsellor. Yeah. And 
That was about it. And that was the Gloucester City Arts Council. And what they used to do was to bring out the... So I became their publicity person. Mm -hmm. And so that was my first foray in, into the arts here. Mm -hmm. And slowly just started bringing me a bit more interest in me. Got a, a you know, creative arts, which isn't anymore. There's mm -hmm. quite a lot of groups that started up, mm -hmm. but it was closed. And I understand more now because Central Coast, as you know, it's, it's blessed with the waterways that we've mm -hmm. got. It's blessed with our rivers and our waterfalls and our ocean and lakes and everything. But it also splits us into little islands. Mm -hmm. It isolates us. And so there's stuff going on and there's interesting mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. in all these places, but we don't know what they're doing. We have no idea. We just know connection point. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what you're doing with your shine is a really amazing thing mm -hmm. because we've got to start using social media to reach out because mm -hmm. there are some incredible people mm -hmm. out here. So mm -hmm. I've just watched through many frustrating times at festivals and events and going to council. We didn't even have anyone representing the arts on council. You had all these sports fields. Mm -hmm. There was no gallery. No Laycock Street Theatre. Wow. Nothing like that. There was nothing. There was a, the, you know, they performed, they used to perform in the school hall. Yeah. You know, at Henry yeah, Kendall or Gosford High School or something like that. Yeah, nothing but there was specific. nothing. No, there was nothing. Wow. So, having seen slowly yeah. um, this happening, I mean, and even Laycock Street, it shouldn't be where it is. No, it's yeah. not And I remember, oh, yeah, we knew that right next to a to a fire, a fire station, for goodness sake, you know, mm -hmm. really it was all yeah. the payoff, so there's been a lot of frustration, mm -hmm. and then we got our first cultural officer, community mm -hmm. arts officer, because I was involved in community arts, after mm -hmm. having done this, realising that I could do this, went down to the Crafts Council, and they could see the work I was doing, nobody else was doing, and they contracted me for the Festival of Sydney, that's basically how I started working in um, Sydney and being their artist for two weeks in Hyde Park. But through all that, getting more work on festivals and events, I was meeting other artists mm -hmm. and other people involved with the arts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I started, you know, going to the Australia Council more. And then it was the mm -hmm. Women in Arts Fest, the International Year of Women. Oh, wow. 19, God, 80s, God, early, early 80s. Yeah. And so I was on, I, I went on a committee up here, it's just anything that I could do, anything to do with the arts, you know, particularly for community. Yeah. Not, mm -hmm. I'm not into the fine arts, you know, I mean, yeah. I'm not into the arts of, I mean, I love it, you know, people who are their artists and they sit in their studios and they paint and they're on their own and they're very, they like that. Yeah. I'm more, I'm more about the stories and people's stories. Yeah. And so basically, from there, um, I started getting in at committees and shaking and um, getting uh, the, through the Women and Arts Festival. Mm -hmm. uh, we found that the Australia Council for the Arts had funding that they were going to go 50-50 with council, or they were going to pay the first two years of a community arts officer. The wow. first time there was... Um, anyone representing arts. Mm. So I remember standing up and talking at the council meeting and I remember someone from the Australia Council went, well, and that's when we got our first officer for the arts, mm. representing the arts. Mm -hmm. And then because community arts was pretty big, starting to, to grow at that time, you know, we, there were bits of funding to do little things here and there. And it went from Again, you know, in my book, I've got a whole chapter called Paint My Creative Journey. I've only, look, it's a long one, but I've only just scraped the surface because, wow, to go into people's homes, into their towns, into their cities, into their lives, 
that never met you before and to sit down and share stories. It's such an honour because people who bring you into their lives really closely and they share from their hearts. Um, and, and the arts connects people and allows us to speak um, what we're feeling. That's what art is, it's an expression of your exactly. internal feelings. Yeah. And then what happens? Yeah. The government comes in and changes the visual sort of like this line, you know, well these are times mm. when there was arts, then when little Johnny Howard gets in, sorry little Johnny Howard, you've got to put in the beard, he took <coughs> all the money away from the arts. Mm. Did not want artists like myself going out into communities and empowering communities to tell their stories. That's when we were threatened with if we did, we'd be up for sedition. Yeah. And, you know, because we, artists can be very powerful. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and creative. And yeah. <laughs> there's always ways around you, Exactly, things. you always find a solution. Exactly. <laughs> but they took the money away from where there was things yeah. like, you know, the money for me to work with in preschools and do training yeah. in the before and after school hours sector. Yeah. Working with disabilities, working in so many areas, telling stories through the arts. Yeah. But they they didn't like that at all. And so the money you know, money was whisked away yeah. and so it yeah. started drying up. Mm -hmm. So what I hear for the future what you would love is more creativity growing and more also melting together of like the Aboriginal the indigenous people who really know this land and sharing their story and the others yeah. listening. Yeah. And what I also hear a lot from the way what you're saying is I love your passion for kids, but also how you are engaged um, in the community. It's like every age. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how old you are, you can you can put a part into into this community and be part. It's really mm -hmm. merging. Like let's get across those waterways ways and let's like really all mm -hmm. get yeah, together true. you know you can be a certain age but i feel our mm -hmm. souls and our spirits yeah. are aging <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, you know we're 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 mm -hmm. ageless mm -hmm. and if we look at ourselves and go oh my god look at all my wrinkles mm -hmm. look at this and we get lost in what's on the outside <laughs> yeah, yeah. we forget about what's in and then you pain and it doesn't matter None of that matters. Mm, no, so wow, I have friends yes. who are really young. I can wow. sit and have a stronger conversation with the young ones who are teenagers to any age. Yeah. Because we're all the same. And as far as when you're talking about Indigenous, now I have a lot of Indigenous friends. I've worked mm. in so many mm. um, First Nations mm. communities and, and seeing such sad things mm. happening and seeing uh, the, the, the pain and the suicides and having young kids suiciding and the we've heard about that it's, it's, all it's horrible yeah, look, this it's is horrible i know like it's seriously this is our community intergenerational yeah. memory this is yes. see i can relate to that yes. that's why i have a lot of friends yeah. uh, who are aboriginal and, and you know they understand yeah. me because yeah. we hold the memories of our mm. in ourselves in our in ourselves mm. the memory of all our people and mm. all our yeah. generations are there mm. yeah we have to um they live within us mm. so we can get caught into their traumas mm -hmm. or we can release them mm. yeah so through my book i'm releasing all my ancestors mm. i'm releasing all these all my aunties and cousins and grandparents and you know me releasing them with love that they know in spirit that I've got this, that they're acknowledged, yeah. they're honoured, mm -hmm. yeah. they're loved, and I'm so grateful to them. And it's so important to speak about your ancestors in that way, honour them and speak. Yeah, them. because they're my, you know, this is the person I am, mm. and what where I live and what I have. When I think of the things that they, the yes. traumas that they had to go mm. through, the traumas that my parents mm. went through. Yeah. And to think that I have this life that I've got now, mm. if I can inspire others and these young people, if I can inspire them to to look at yeah. what have you got, stop looking at your glass being half empty yeah. and start looking mm. at it being half full. Mm. Yeah. And Bring fill it up alive. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, keep adding yeah. to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that's 
that's it. You know, and you can't get on without forgiving. And that no. doesn't matter if the other person that you're forgiving isn't even there. Yeah. You don't oh, that is to so powerful. Them. That is so powerful, by the way. Yes, if you can just forgive someone. Just forgive them and mean yeah. it. Just yes. let them go. And you don't yes. have to see them. No. You don't have to write to them. No. You don't have to call them. <laughs> you just do it in yourself because oh. you're feeling and holding that anger. And, you know, and so what is it doing? It's not but affecting the other person. No, exactly. So you're not the victim anymore. Then. Victim. Yes. You're allowing like, to be the victim. Yes. And you're not. So yeah, let that go. Let yes. Go. You free yourself up, and then when you free those spaces inside you, get out of your closet, mm. which a lot of people yeah, call it's a secret. It's a family secret. Oh. <laughs> you know how many people have got their secret? Mm. Look, every one of those secrets. That means no. that whenever you are wanting to talk with them, you think, oh, should I say that? Mm. Or maybe I'll say yeah. that. Yeah. It's tiring yeah. of being like that with Isn't that. Isn't it? <laughs> it's it's oh. it's yeah. Isn't it? Isn't yeah. it? The more you can let go of that. Yeah. Take those horrid things out of your yeah. closet. You're the only you're not the only person that's got pain in there. You're not the only person whose relatives have done terrible shit things and yeah. whatever. Yeah. But just acknowledge and let them go. Yeah. yeah. And it's again it's not a competition. <laughs> we had the worst coral and most ancestors had no oh, horror. It's just <laughs> exactly that. It's not it's that's not a competition it is either. Is either. But if we have a competition, then yeah. who's participating and just bringing more life? The only competition I have is with myself. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I love to be that. the best yes. that I can be. Mm. Yes. And um, it's true. But, you know, you yes. just say to someone, someone saying, how are you today? You know, and you want to mm. say, mean it or not. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh, oh look, I'm all right. It's, uh, I, I woke up with this terrible backache. And, and then instead of them going, um, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope it gets better. They'll have to turn around and go, Oh, you and your back sore. Mine shot. Yes. Sore. <laughs> and I've got this headache back in my neck here. And my arm, and I think, hang on, what did I start up here? <laughs> it's like, mine is bad, worse than yeah, yours. Exactly. Again, that competition comes yeah. in. Yeah. But if somebody said to me, oh, I'm not feeling well today, I wouldn't say, oh, I feel worse than you. Yeah. <laughs> Your story, so, and I hear this a lot. Oh, my story is nothing. Your story is like after hearing a bit of your story, my story is nothing. And I, I said to people, hey, everybody's story is important. Don't compare it with no. mine. Mm -hmm. You know, just never don't do that comparison. Yeah. You know, you're important, and I've done that a lot in the workshops that I've done. Because they judge it from the right side of the brain. They do a lot of left brain, right brain mm -hmm. exercises where they see where mm. how you can mm -hmm. shift that Keeps cross. That and mm. away from it. Yeah. You know, be with a whole lot of kids and you know, and I'll explain to them about this and we might sort of throw a whole lot of colour, pick your favourite colour. Um, they do and they say, Okay, so why did you pick that colour? How does that colour make you feel? makes you feel happy or whatever and this and that and the other and we go around and then I'll go I think your colour sucks my colour's so much better than your colour <laughs> I like blue I think blue is the best colour yellow is awful now there we start yeah. there you yeah. start and that's what happens yeah you know yeah. that we need all those colours to make the rainbow we need exactly. all those colours oh that is such a beautiful yeah. picture Do you know where they all go together and they all go one. together I love so that. then i explain yeah. how that judgment to these kids comes from that left side of your brain yeah. you are now because that's your yeah. analytical well, well, you're making yeah. someone judging. aware and how yeah. they think yeah. and, and teaching yeah. that in such an early right. age mm. is just so powerful well, that that's later. what i'd like to see more of yeah. and mm. through these sorts of techniques which yeah. have all been channels for me yeah you know i don't learn any of this but i know they work yeah. And that the kids understand that when they do judge like that, yeah. that's their left brain coming in. Yeah. That's not coming from a creative place. No. Yeah, that's where love comes from. Yeah. You know, yes. that's exactly yeah. that's exactly right. Yeah. So I'm hoping another thing I say, you know, I say to them. So 
you know, when the music's playing and your foot starts tapping, where does that come from? Mm. <laughs> it comes from the right side of your yes. brain. Mm. But if you start thinking, oh, I'm not tapping right, <laughs> I'm tapping it wrong, <laughs> <laughs> then, then it's coming from the other side, yeah. popping in. And so going, you can judge your left so side. So you're not even brain. enjoying the tap anymore <laughs> because you're questioning where the tap is yeah. coming from. Yeah, and you lost that moment. That's yeah. exactly right. And it's about that moment. Mm. It's about yeah. that moment. Being the moment. It's about the moment. Yeah. And, you know, okay, you can have your plans, but yeah. don't live for that. No. That's another one, which I really like, another saying. It's a Buddhist one, a Buddha. We are born to live, not to prepare for life. Oh. Oh. And that's, you know, I really oh, think that's really powerful no, too. We are born to live so while well. people are preparing and we're working hard now so we can do our holiday at the end of the year and, and so we can get the pool and we can do this and we can do that. And the parents, and they're just working, working, working. And where's the quality for the kids? Oh, but, but we're working hard now so that we can take you on a holiday at the end of the year. It's not about spending that time about now. And then you walk across the road and a bus hits you. And you're gone, or something happens, and you're gone. Mm -hmm. And really, only when people really visit tragedy like that, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. do they understand? You don't want them to visit that tragedy. You want them you to stay don't. before the tragedy. Yeah. It's a beautiful it's wake up call too. Mm -hmm. And balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that balance in life is really important, mm -hmm. and not putting yourself last because women tend no, to do yeah. that. Mm -hmm. You put yourself down there, oh, my family needs me, and this, and you know, my husband's going, and I've got to do that, and it's always somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we just do, and I really say, you must do the unselfish. The yeah. self care is very yeah. important. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's definitely not egoistic or anything, it's no. just filling up your cup mm -hmm. so that you can actually share half of the That's cup right. at the end before you fill yeah. it up again. Because otherwise you can't share anything. Yes, that's right. I was just thinking, it's not like sitting in front of a mirror and going... Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's <laughs> <That's, that's laughs> my time now, yeah. you know. Ooh. Do I look good? <laughs> I I need the nose no. job and you know, <laughs> Botox. And that's when the critical side comes oh, in. Too, that's right? again, my brain. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. right. But when you nurture your yeah. soul and you're feeling you wake up some mornings and you just have a great... How would you nurture your soul? Yeah. Um, I could walk around my lagoon and I, I <laughs> The lagoon we don't talk about. Yes. And we don't share that one. No, we don't. <laughs> it's that's a very right. That is right. <laughs> oh, sorry, folks. Sorry. <laughs> the I one place we're not sharing. That's <laughs> true. And I sit in there and I also think through my art at the moment, you know, I'm putting it on mugs now. I've just <laughs> got a couple of mugs there. My art, just just being able to do to do that. Um, I haven't done that for a while because the book has taken up so much time. But it's at that point now. I've just got to wait now for the professor to stamp it as reading it, and then it goes to the to the designer and then the printer. <laughs> and but up until then, how do I nurture myself? I'm very good at taking time out. Mm. People go, "Oh, you're so busy now. You're so busy." And I think I mentioned oh, to you before about my busy. Mm -hmm. They go. We want to get in touch with, but you, mm. but just you're always so busy because I'm like, I know, I am not busy. I'm fully engaged in life, and that means that I have that choice because I own my life. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I'm busy, yeah, you busy it. owns me. Mm. Yeah, I own my life, yeah. and so I then will take that time out. Mm. And if somebody calls me, don't ever. And I say, don't ever assume that I'm too busy for things mm -hmm. because I'm not because I will stop what I'm doing and I will go to whatever because yeah. it's my choice it's part of my exactly. being engaged in life mm -hmm. but if I was busy like a lot of people use that word mm -hmm. and you ring them up and say how and are you busy I'm so busy I'm so busy everyone's so busy and then I think oh shit maybe they're too busy to talk to me mm -hmm. that's it exactly you know, mm -hmm. I was going to say let's have a cup of coffee maybe they're too busy to take time out for us to get together. I yeah. think they're busy because they're doing things that they not, don't want to do as well. It's yeah. something that they're very, they're, they're not it's comfortable with. Yeah. Yeah. So they're there you go. To so, empower them see, and so there you go. It's about when you're fully engaged that so I will take that time out. Yeah. 
and I would go, yeah. okay? Yeah. And I could be invited to this and that and the other, but I don't have any second thoughts. If I feel like, even if in doubt, again, if in doubt, don't. I, I follow yes. that. Mm. I follow that now mm. so well. If I have the slightest bit of doubt, I won't do it. Mm. Yeah. It's like a message, maybe yeah. it's not the right time, not the right place, not the right people, maybe not to do it at all. Mm. But at that time, no, I won't. So if I have any doubt, somebody, you know, like we've spoken to somewhere on the weekend and, you know, all this stuff and this is not happening to allow me to go and the week that you sort of in my way to stop me and I think, am I going to force this because I should be there? And we all feel that, that way. Um, or, you know, I'll just flow with it until the last minute, basically. Yeah. yeah. But and I it's important. It's important to, to just stay open for that and it's listen and watch. Even though it might be very important to people, if it doesn't feel right, mm -hmm. would you, you know, I won't it's do it right anymore. Yeah. No, I won't. I yeah. won't. And you wouldn't be there with it, your full heart. No. There would be still that little bit of doubt. So it's better to allow someone else to take on that yes. spot with like the full heart. Yes. Maybe there was someone waiting to be asked, but they weren't asked. No, um, no, that's right. Yeah. So, you, never you know, know if you doubt, don't. Yeah, take a rest one. when you need it. Take a break. Um, self-care. Yeah. Just self-care. Yeah. All the time. Clutch yeah, on yourself. Yeah. 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 And, and you know, I mean, I don't do yoga and stuff because I can't hold it. <laughs> <laughs> Mongoose pose. Somebody showed me in the middle of the breath go fruit up in <laughs> yesterday. The right place to they show did that. Yeah, and she said, I've done my back in. I thought, oh, that's no good. And she said, doing the mongoose pose. Really? She said, and this is right in the middle of the fruit tree. She said, well, you know, the downward dog. And then she went through the downward dog. And said, that's great. I don't do that. <laughs> I do not do that. No. But, you know, I will walk. feel what I what I also sense is if you feel like you have this urge like finishing the book you will be very much in that zone and really like get yeah. that book done because that's what's important right now um, yes. it's really fine again coming back to that balance and you can have that balance within a day or with a longer journal yeah. or a longer period you know Chris that is so yeah. true um, I whenever I take anything on I don't talk about it I'm not a gunner there's enough mm -hmm. gunners out there yeah. Gonna do this, and gonna do that, <laughs> and they can be gonna doing something for a lot of years, but they keep talking about it. Oh, I'm gonna go and book. Oh, I'm gonna go and this. I don't talk about it. If I take something on, mm. then I commit myself to it. I honestly thought this book would be done a lot sooner, but I realised it had its own life force. It wasn't mm -hmm. just my own doing, and I had to surrender. That was another big word for me. Ah. I need to surrender. And to trust that it will just do itself in its own time. Mm. I can't push it. I mm. thought I could, but I can't. <laughs> really. Yeah, we all yeah. try, right? I know. <laughs> so. just well, I wanted it done. You're so an I artist. I mean, <laughs> as an artist, I bet it's the same. Like, you yeah. can't force this painting to be ready no, no. by yeah. then. Because then it's just like, creativity blocked. Left, no. left brain done. Yeah. I'm taking ownership now. Yeah. Let's try finishing this painting. And then the last <laughs> minute. And then wait till the last minute. Yeah. It's yeah. a last minute thing. Yeah. You know, when particularly if you're on a on a deadline. Mm -hmm. You sort of just wait. And you just have to learn to surrender. Mm -hmm. I really believe that. You know, you can have all the ideas in your head that you want to do. And and everything's coming along to stop it from happening again. Yeah. And you just have to Surrender to it. Mm. This may not be the time. Mm. This may not be that. Mm. Yeah. So something I thought would take a year and a bit, it's like three three years and, mm. and a bit. Mm. But you know that if that's how it's meant to be born, it's yeah. like a gestation period for a baby, mm -hmm. for giving baby. birth to mm. something. And maybe now the people are in the right mindset to actually receive that as well. Yes. Um, so whatever, I can't wait to read it. whatever will be. Yeah. Whatever will be. Um, but I just, and yes. it's the same, like, that's why all the big projects I've done and all the festivals and events, when I think of how much energy, mm. I mean, even now at this time, but 
can't like date someone that was dating and isn't that dopey. You know what I mean? <laughs> because it's so passionate, you know, like yeah. and yes. and drive it and things are happening and through the enthusiasm picks up people along the way. Yeah. <laughs> They want to be a part of it, you know, yeah. like we're going to do this amazing thing. They want to be a part of it. They want to be a part of it. And then you think, oh, shit, I've really started something here. And then, you know, <laughs> I've got to yeah. keep going. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but it's also about empowering mm -hmm. all those people mm -hmm. that want to be part of what yeah. you might have. And it's empowering them but yeah. because none of us own anything. Yeah, that's true. So you, you like are what we were talking about. Exactly. We don't own anything. Yeah. And so we just, but if you didn't take it on, take it on. Yeah. I can't tell you how many people say to me, oh, I've got a book in there, I'm going to write a book, oh, that's good, and I just sort of go, yeah, yeah, all right. Well, then if you really are, yeah. just sit down yeah. and start doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're going to do it, commit yourself to it. Yeah. You know, you've got to do so many yeah. things. Commit yourself. Yeah. If you can't commit yourself, stop driving yourself crazy. Yeah. Yeah. What you yeah. have to do. Again, it's moment. holding you yeah. back. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. not living in the moment. Yes. It's not the right time. Next up, that surrender, that idea of that book, it'll come back when yes. the time is right. That's right. You, there's a time for everything yeah. in our life. Yeah. So I decided that I'd do this book when when I was turning 70 because I thought, well, you know, I've had <laughs> such a full on life. Yeah. You know, I could do this. I want to do this. I want to start it mm. in my 70th year. Yeah. Yeah. Or before leading up, so yeah. it's been three years now. Yeah, yeah. and I just turned seventy-two. Yeah. So, so yeah. glad to have written this book, and I'm looking forward to reading yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to end it's this here. Good. I think yeah. we've yeah. gone over, and I knew we would with you. Yeah, we so would. Many things to talk about. <laughs> but what would you leave? One last thing, advice, or a saying, or something that means a lot to you that you would give a gift to our audience today. Wow. Okay, I think that what I would say is that if you want to set yourself something, if you're passionate, find your passion first. Mm -hmm. Find your passion and then go with it. And if you're passionate about something and you feel strongly, don't be afraid to get in there and to do it. Mm -hmm. But to do it with service for others. It has to have service attached to it. It has whatever you mm -hmm. do. Think of the repercussion that it's going to have on all those around you and how we can all really be one, all one. It doesn't matter, black, white, you know, all of us. We're all custodians of this land now. We're all here now. And we should all care for each other and for, the, and for this sacred land that we live on and try and make this world a better place and inspire our young people, give them courage to fight for this. Thank you, everyone, for yeah. tuning Thank in you. today. Wow. And if you want to contact Nina, what's the best way to contact you? Well, I guess they could contact me through my Facebook group, or yeah, Nina yeah, exactly. Angelo, or yeah. um, my connections of no, not connections. That's my celebrants here. Yeah. <laughs> um, we might yeah. have to come again. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> We're just coming back. Yeah. That's, that's, that's sacred, sacred love yeah. ceremonies. Yeah. Um, I think through my Facebook or, you know, if they want to, my email, Nina yeah, sure. at cci.net.au. So easy. We can, yeah. And when Nina's book yeah. comes out, we'll post oh, it. Yeah, oh, we'll definitely yeah. put that on. Yeah. So, yeah. We'll yeah. have a like, launch book. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Thank girl. You. Thank you. Thank you. See you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Wow.